everyone and welcome to stamp and chat live i'm gina from gina k designs and it's great to see all of you coming in from all around the world tonight we're going to have some fun because i'm going to show you how to make your own metallic paper and i'm going to show you two different ways to do it and this technique works great for die cut images and for those big die cut greetings it's a great way to create just that perfect little bit of sparkle or shine. And um, you're going to have fun seeing both ways that you can do it. But before we get started, let's say hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, hey, what do you <laughs> say over there? Hey, how are you? Doing great. Yeah? Better than better than horrible. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, it's going to be a fun night tonight. I'm excited. I did show you one little sneak peek of what I was working on earlier. What'd you think? Yeah, I mean, that looks like it's part of like a like a sports car automobile or something. That finish, right? you know? Yeah, it's like, uh, that's pretty cool. I can't wait to show them. It's going to be fun. And then you're coming back a little bit later with a word of the day? Uh, well, if, um, <laughs> yeah, if you'll have me, I'll be back. I will have you. I would love that. And also both Tom and I want to just extend our thoughts and prayers to everybody that's, um, in the path of this hurricane, Idalia, um, all of our friends in Florida, in Georgia, in North and South Carolina, everybody's getting hit with something. And, um, this is quite a doozy. So we are praying for everybody in that path and hoping that everybody is safe and somewhere where they can just relax and, you know, fingers crossed, there's not a lot of damage and we all get out of it unscathed. Yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. 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 So we're thinking of you all. Okay, well, let's turn to something a little bit more positive. We are going to use some dies. Now, I have to give a shout out to my friends, Kathy Zilski and Mindy Egan, because Kathy and Mindy both made cards using the new leaf dies. And they used, I think they both used metallic cardstock. And people have been going nuts for it. And our customer service has been getting a lot of questions like, when is your, when's your metallic card stock going to be back in stock? And when is your site going to be back up and running? For those of you who weren't here for the announcement, our website is being migrated to the new site. Actually, the migration is done. And we have been inside working very hard to tag all of the products to make sure they show properly in the filters and designing a few different little elements and stuff. And it will be back up and running on September 6th. So if you've been waiting to and wondering what's going on, our website will be back up on September 6th. Okay. But Kathy and Mindy both used uh, metallic cardstock for their leaf dies. And our metallic cardstock is out of stock. It's on order and it should be here soon. But in the meantime, I thought it would be fun to show you guys how you can make your own metallic cardstock. And I'm going to show it to you two different ways. So the first way I'm going to show it to you is using embossing powder. And the second way I'm going to show you is using foil. Not everybody has the supplies for foil, but most of you have the supplies for embossing powder. So let's start with that way, even though I don't like to start with that way because it does make some dust, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, so I have a piece of white cardstock here and I am going to dig out, let me find it. Sorry, I had to turn around. My fine detail gold embossing powder. Now, if you don't have fine detail gold, that is totally fine. You can use any gold embossing powder you have. And then I'm gonna cut this down about that big. And that is gonna be the perfect size for this leaf, okay? 
Now, the next thing that I'm going to do, normally I use the embossing magic pad to remove any dust. Hey, Mindy and Kathy, I was just talking about you two. To remove any dust from the surface of my cardstock when I'm embossing, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm actually counting on the um, static of this cardstock because I'm going to emboss the entire piece of cardstock. So let me plug my embossing gun in, which is something I forgot to do earlier. So I have that there. Here's my Wagner heat tool. <clears throat> let me back up just a little bit. Okay. And then I am going to get some Gina K Designs embossing and watermark ink. I'm going to also get a clothespin here and I'm going to get a piece of cardstock that I use for a lot of my embossing powders. This is just a folded piece of cardstock. Okay, so I'm going to start by taking this embossing magic pad, uh, this embossing and watermark ink. Ignore my red in there. That got in there because I was not very careful, but it's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. See, it's not transferring. And I'm going to emboss all over the surface of this cardstock. Now, I'm leaving this little part blank up here so I have a place to put my finger to hold it down. And then I'm going to put my clothespin right there. And I'm going to take this embossing powder in gold. And I'm going to put that all over this piece of cardstock. There we go. So that's pretty good. Put it over here too. Good enough. That should be good enough for my first round. I'm going to put this back and get it out of the way. And then I'm going to take my heat tool. I'm going to heat it up just a little bit first so that it's nice and hot and my cardstock isn't going to warp too quickly. I'm trying to read some of your comments. Yes, Simon's paste, his his lunar paste would work for this too. That would be very cool. But the two ways that I'm showing tonight are using embossing powder and using foil. And the foil is just unbelievable. You're going to get two completely different looks out of this. One is going to give you a more muted look, kind of like a brushed metallic cardstock, similar to the metallic cardstock that I have in my collection. And then the other is going to give you what Tom was talking about, that car shine, almost like a car emblem look. So we're going to do our first layer here. Now, I've, been, I've done this before. I, you probably, some of you have been with me for a super long time, probably saw this 10 years ago on my channel. But, you know, I don't remember what I ate for breakfast. So I like, I personally like the refreshers and I like revisiting the old techniques. <laughs> I hope you guys do too. And you can see that is just like a beautiful little bit of texture in that. I love that. And once that's dry, we're going to go back again over the whole thing. I am going to flip this over so I don't get any um, embossing powder that was stuck to that onto my embossing and watermark pad. You know, you really can't say that. What? That you you can't even remember what you had for breakfast. <laughs> you have the same thing for breakfast every day. Well, it's an expression. <laughs> I know I do. I, I do. I have the same thing every single day. <laughs> I am very boring when it comes to food, but that's because I'm diabetic and I know what works and it makes it easy. You just eat what works and you move on. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna go back onto this side because that's the messy side and we're gonna give it a second coat. Now it's gonna get nice and thick. Love it. And of course you can do three or four coats if you want, but I definitely think two is plenty for the look we're going for. Okay, here we go, round two. And you can see this actually smooths it out a little bit more. That first layer had a little bit more texture to it. Kind of more like stucco. This has a little bit more like orange peel texture. And if you've ever painted walls, you know what I'm talking about. 
So you can see that's a little bit smoother. Isn't that so pretty? And this is such an easy way. If you don't have metallic cardstock, it's okay. You can do this and you can cut out words. You can cut out die shapes with this and they will look absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to move this out of the way for a second. And then I'm going to get my die cutting machine. Now I have shown you before, and if you wanted to do the border of your cardstock to match, all you have to do is the same thing. Just put embossing and watermark ink around the perimeter, put the powder on and emboss it, and then put your layered panel on top. And it will look like you have a full piece of metallic cardstock back there. And it will match all of your embossing perfectly. Yes, the first, the first layer did melt, but when you layer two layers together, it seems to get a little bit smoother because it's thicker. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my die cutting machine. So the paper that I'm using is the Gina K Designs 80 pound layering weight cardstock. So it's pretty, you know, pretty thin cardstock not super thick. It's our layering weight. And this is going to die cut really nicely. So I'm just going to die cut this. I'm going to run it through twice here. <laughs> I know I, I, I have a tendency to just eat the same stuff every day just because it's easy. Now, if it's not cut out completely, then I, I'll flip it over on its back and just send it through one more time just because dies tend to work better when you um cut them on their back i don't know why and if you ever have trouble with a more detailed die you can always just throw a little shim on there and run it through again just to make sure it cuts out easily it's got a lot of embossing powder on it so but that's a good cut now, I also like what's left behind, and that seems like it would be fun for something. So I'll just throw that over there into my scrap pile. Yeah, the big reveal, Mindy, right? This is all Mindy's fault and Kathy Zilski's fault because they are doing these amazing techniques and people are watching them and then coming to our website looking for the metallic <laughs> that they used. So <laughs> telling you, I'm just poking a few extras out here, but... Really what I need to do is just poke these top holes to help it release a little bit easier. Okay. I think I tore this. Oh, no, I didn't. Did I? Oh, yeah, I did. I can pull that other part out, but look how pretty that is. Isn't that beautiful? And it's just so... I pulled on this before I poked the little hole, so that's my bad. Just make sure you you don't do that, that you actually release everything first. But it's okay, because when we put this together on the card, we can just tape this little piece down too. I'm not popping this up at all, so we can just tape it together just like that, and it will look totally fine. But look at how beautiful that is. Now, that's very antique looking. It's an antique looking metallic, very similar to our antique, to our gold metallic cardstock. <clears throat> so I love that one. So I'm going to put this one aside. Then we're going to do our next one. But first I've got to poke out all these dots. When you use the embossing powder, it is, I don't know if it's like a little puffy or something, but they don't fall out quite as easily. So you do have to poke them out. Same with the next technique. Is that what's known as a gold leafing technique? Oh, gosh, that should have been the word of the day. Gold leaf. <laughs> yes. <laughs> have you guys ever done gold leafing? I watched my dad do it. He used to gold leaf lamps all the time, and he loved to gold leaf. And it's really a cool technique. It uses super thin pieces. They look like foil, but they're actually gold. And uh, oh, it's beautiful. I don't know if they're real gold, but they're beautiful. Okay, now for my next technique, I'm going to get my mink out here, and I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to set it for three. 
because that's what ThermoWeb usually recommends. I don't know if ThermoWeb actually recommends anything for the mink now that I'm thinking about it. But I think most people who use the mink, when they use ThermoWeb and toner, they go with number three. So I'm going to let that heat up for a minute. And then I'm going to be very careful here because I want to get as much dust off of my surface. So I like to use Swiffer dry sweeping cloths, these little duster cloths, to remove all of the dust. Because if you get dust, let me explain how toner paper works. We're gonna use ThermoWeb toner paper. And this is their black paper that is coated with toner. So you can foil on it. And we're gonna make our own metallic cardstock using this. But toner paper is melts when you put it through a laminator. So it's gonna melt and then when you put foil over it, the toner paper underneath melts or anywhere that there's a toner design will melt and the foil sticks to that melted toner. Then when it comes out the other side, it cools and when it cools, you can peel the foil off and everywhere the foil, everywhere that there was toner, you will now have a foil design. So one of the problems with toner paper, it's not a problem, but it's just a situation, is that if you get dust on it, the dust is going to prevent the foil from sticking to the toner because the dust will be a little barrier. So now you can see I have a little bit of dust on there because I used embossing powder and because my place is dusty. And now I just remove that dust. So I'm going to do it one more time. But I'm going to cut this down to about... I'll just do like a two. No, I'm going to do a full sheet here because I can maybe use some of it later. So I'll go like a little under four inches by five inches. And you can save these for other things too. So then I'm going to use the thermo, the thermo web foil. They do all my foils for me. And this is the Gina K Designs Fancy Foil. These are toner foils. They're not hot foils. Although hot foil will stick to everything, this is the kind of foil you're supposed to use with toner paper and you're going to get better results. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to, once again, let's see, we're going to get the carrier sheet that goes with the mink. And the first thing I'm going to do is dust out my carrier sheet. Now I like to use a shim this is a shim. It's a piece of cardstock. It works as a shim. It's perfect for being a shim. And that's what I'm going to use here. It's a great shim. And it's going to tighten up my laminator even more, my mink machine even more. Because the way toner works is it works with both heat and pressure. So when you increase the pressure a little bit, you get even better adhesion. So then I'm going to take my piece of toner paper, and this is available on ThermoWeb's website and many of our big box partner friends and small store partner friends. So make sure you check your local stores and your big box stores. And your when I say big box, I mean like the big variety online stores. They carry this as well. We do too, but our website is down. Um, and then I'm going to take a piece of the 14 karat Gina K Designs foil and I am going to use my Swiffer on the back of that foil as well. So one more time over here, make sure I'm dust free, and then I'm gonna stick that on top of that toner paper, and I'm gonna place this inside of my carrier sheet with my shim to create a little bit more pressure. And what weight cardstock is the shim? The shim is 80 pound cardstock. It's our layering weight cardstock. And I kind of use it for just about everything except card bases. I do like to use our 120. Okay, so here we go. It's going through folded side first. I'm going to send it through the mink. Okay, now this is going to come out the other side. I'm not going to peel it right away because remember I said that the toner melts and then it cools. Well, when you first pull this out, it's pretty hot. So you wanna make sure that you've given it a chance to cool so that 
the two parts can stick together. Yes, ThermoWeb has it too. It's their product, ThermoWeb. And they have the all my fancy foils too. So if you're looking to get some of those. So this is kind of hot to the touch, right? So if I peel this right now, it might not be cool everywhere. So it might not stick as well. Now, if you want, you can send it through a second time. If you feel like your machine wasn't hot enough or you don't have a mink, maybe you have a regular laminator, you can send it through a second time just to make sure that everything got hot enough. But I think we're going to be okay here. But I do want this to cool a little bit. Now, toner paper is pretty thin. So I'm going to do a little something before we die cut on this. But I do want to make sure that this is... Let's see, are you dusting only because you used embossing powder? Debbie, no, I dust all the time because I live in a dusty environment because I craft and I don't clean. And I'm, I'm only kidding, I do clean, but dust is just everywhere. So it can be something as simple as just dust from the environment or something that you know comes off of my sweater or something. So I always try to dust before I do this technique. Okay. So here we go. Let's peel it now and we'll see if we got some good. Now, there might have been some dust right there, but we've got plenty here that we can use because we're going to be cutting this out. So I'm going to cut out a small piece and then I'm going to save the rest for later that I can use for something else. So I'm going to use this piece right here and I'm going to cut it with my uh, with this die. Now, I probably should have sent it through a second time because I really didn't have my mink um, heated up as long as I might have liked it to be heated up. But it's okay. We got what we needed out of it. And all I needed was a small area. And I got tons of areas that I can use for lots of die cuts. So I feel good about that. I'm going to turn the mink off. Okay. Now this, I'm telling you, the foil one to me is the most spectacular. Now, before I put this together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece of white cardstock. Let's move this over here and I'll work right down here so you can see. And then I am going to take some Gina K Designs tape and I'm going to put tape on the back of this toner paper. And yes, you can use liquid glue for this too, but you will have to let it dry a little bit longer or any kind of adhesive you want to use. But I am going to tape that down onto white cardstock. By taping it down onto white cardstock, now it's thicker and I've got cardstock. The toner, toner paper, they have a peel and stick, which is thicker, but I like using this toner paper because I feel like it, it just foils really well and it's the one I always buy and you get three sheets of it. And now I'm going to send that through the machine with that die on there. This is truly my favorite way. Yes, Swiffers. And I know not everybody has Swiffers because some of my friends in Australia were asking, what's a Swiffer? I guess they don't have that product in Australia. Ooh, let me get that back down there. Look how pretty it looks already. Let's put that back in there. We'll tape that down. Make sure that's in good. I'm going to tape it down. I want to flip it over. I should have flipped it over initially, but I just want it to stay put. Maybe you need another shim. I need another shim. I do. My, you know what it is? Normally, I don't need shims, but look how curved my, my plate is. It's so curved that it's not hitting the uh, actual die in the center. <laughs> Very important that you keep things simple. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Tom's on a roll tonight, guys. He's on a total roll. I'm going to send it through one more time. Let me turn the plate over. Maybe that will help. I bet that will help. I need to order new plates already, you know? Okay. All right. So. I'm doing good. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Let's hope for the best here. I got my tape there holding everything down. Okay. So now I'm going to try very hard not to break it like I broke the other one. 
But this, honestly, I got to remember, there we go. I got to push all this out first. I was too excited on the last one. Okay. Now let's see what we got. Ooh, looks so good. Oh, look at that. This to me is my favorite. It's my favorite. I'll admit it. It is my favorite. That is gorgeous. And we're going to do two cards with the same layout. And then we're just going to use the different... Um, we could do maybe two different color schemes. That might be nice. But we're just going to use the two different styles of metallic cardstock here. Now you do have to kind of pick it off the other side because sometimes it gets a little stuck. And this is kind of thick compared to the last one because it's got the toner paper and then it's got that extra 80 pound cardstock where the one with embossing is a little bit thinner because it's just the 80 pound cardstock with some embossing powder on it. So this does feel like a thicker embellishment and it does take a little bit more to pull everything apart. Plus it's got that adhesive on there. So you're dealing with a little bit of that being stuck around the edges. But honestly, to me, this is the most beautiful. And you know what? For me to sit here and poke all of these out when I already made one earlier, I'm just going to use the one that I made earlier because this is going to take a little while. So let me find the one that I made earlier. I know it's around here somewhere. Here it is. And you can see what it looks like when it's all cut. Oh, isn't that one beautiful? Oh, I really like that. And so here we've got the antique look, antique metallic gold, and then that shiny mirror kind of gold. Okay. Oh, my die cutting plates. I have tried everything that everybody has suggested and they still warp. But I can't really tell you why I'm excited about something, but I will tell you that that issue is going to go away for me. That's all I'm going to tell you because I have something very fun to share in the near future. So we're just going to leave it at that. And I know that is a tease if you ever heard one, right? <laughs> okay. So let me get a different piece of cardstock here for the next part of my, my, technique, my card. And I'm going to cut two pieces of white cardstock. I know I'm such a tease. I am a tease. I know it. I know it. I know it. Okay. So I'm going to cut this down to three and a half inches by four and three quarters of an inch. Okay. <laughs> Maybe three and a half inches by four and three quarters. So these are my two of my panels. I'm actually going to need four of these because I'm making two cards. So we're going to go three and a half by four and three quarters and one more three and a half by four and three quarters. Okay. So I'll save all these for little strip sentiments and other things that I want to do. Now for the first card, I'm going to use these colors. I'm going to use some autumn colors here. And then maybe for the second card, Tom, you were talking about like turquoise and stuff. Maybe I should use some of those colors for the second card. Or maybe I should bring in some purples and stuff to make it a little bit more autumn -y. Yeah, I asked Gina if um, she had to back off of turquoise for the fall. And she said, absolutely not. No, I don't. I never, there's never a reason to back off of turquoise. But I think I'll do one with like these warm tones. And then I think I'll do one with like these tones. We'll get plum punch in there. Does that sound good? Okay, so we're going to start. We're going to just make a quick background, just a quick background. Oh, I agree. Turquoise is good for fall. Maybe we'll add some. Okay, this is honey mustard. And so all I'm going to do is just 
pop some ink on there just like this in honey mustard. And I want that texture. I want it to look like linen. Okay, and then I'm going to add some sweet mango in there. There we go. Then I'm going to add a little bit of grass green. Okay. And then I'm going to fill it all in with some wild dandelion. Now, wild dandelion is a great color here because although green and orange don't work well together, wild dandelion works for everything. So here we go. Just like that. I'm filling it all in with that wild dandelion and getting some color. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm going to do my next one. And why don't we add some plum punch into the next one? So let's start with prickly pear. Isn't that a fun background? It's just so simple. Okay, we'll start with prickly pear. Is this prickly pear? Yeah, this is prickly pear. These colors look different when they're wet compared to when they're dry. Okay, then let's add some plum punch. I think a little plum in there is kind of nice. There we go. Okay. Then we'll add, hmm, let's add some honey mustard. It's a little bit warmer. And then I think we'll add, hmm, should we add a little bit of green? Let's add a little bit of green. Yeah, that looks good. Now, believe it or not, this is like chaotic and we're going to use very little of it. And you'll see that in a moment. So let's move that out of the way. Okay, now we need the die cutting machine again. So I'm going to move my mink out of the way. Give me just one second because it's taken up a lot of table space here. It's not really very big, but my table is really tiny. Let me find better plates. I have better plates in here. One of my bad traits is buying new plates and never throwing the old ones away. So these colors, they look a little bit different. I mean, I guess I could have added some turquoise into one of them, but we're sticking with total fall right now. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the coordinating plane die and I'm gonna cut it a little bit off center. Just a little bit over here because I want my, my second one, where's my second one? I want my second one to kind of overlap it right here. Okay, so this one's going to be kind of straight up and down like this. And I'm going to cut that out. So I'm doing the same layout twice. So if you missed it the first time, <laughs> you'll see it the second time. I know I should probably do two different layouts, but... I really like the way this layout looks. Okay, so there's my first one. Now, this one you could save and use for a completely different card by inking on this, stamping a background stamp on it. So you can save all of these cutout pieces. They're actually so pretty just the way they are. Okay, now I'm going to do this again right here. like that same spot all right there we go and then just getting rid of all the dust i think that's good for now i might die cut one more thing but maybe not so now what we're going to do is we're going to put this panel on top of this panel. 
and we're going to create that beautiful open leaf design. You can find a spot that looks the best. I think I'll I'll do it this way because I kind of like the way the that looks a little bit better. Okay. And now I'm going to tape these on. And I am, you could use liquid glue if you want, like maybe just a little tiny bit of liquid glue just on the these things, these loose parts right here. Just a little connect right in there. Like that. Okay. And then I'm going to do the rest with tape. Get in around the leaf. And I'm going in a little bit closer here like that. I know that seems like a lot, but I'm gonna trim this whole thing down. So I want it to be attached wherever I trim it. So if liquid glue is more your jam for this kind of thing, I totally get it. And then I'm going to adhere those together and then press down those so they don't come up. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this one. I love this leaf. I love all the leaves. I'll show you what the other ones look like I cut out too, just because there was extra metallic homemade cardstock to be used. Did I get it on here? I did not go okay now get around the leaf okay and then same thing line that up at the bottom and then press these down Okay. Now we're gonna trim these down a little bit more now that we have them. So they're not perfect. You can see I didn't take too much time to make them perfect. But I'm gonna cut this down to three, three and a quarter by four and a half. Four and a half. There we go. Okay. So that's my first panel. And then I think I'm going to use the plain metallic one on this one. And I got to remember this piece that fell off to just put that in place as well. I'm going to use this one because I feel like I don't know, that feels more soft with the purple in there. I don't know why, but I like it. And then this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to trim this down a little bit on this side. And then I'm going to go to the three and a quarter. Take a little bit off the top here just to make it even. And then go to the four and a half inch mark. So this is smaller than the master layouts. This one is going to give me that big fat border around the perimeter. And then this is going to go over here like this. And then you get the metallic one in there. Okay. So one of these, I was thinking of using a strip sentiment. And I know I have one somewhere around here. Let me see if I have one cut out. Something like, so very grateful. We could put that on this one. And then I was thinking of maybe this one could be a little more generic by using hello friend. So what do you think of that? Do you like those? Now, if you don't want to use strip sentiments, you don't have to. I'll, I will show you something that would look really good here. This particular stamp from the kit, I'm so gr very grateful, would be really pretty stamped right here. I'm so 
grateful, I'm so grateful for you would look really nice stamped right there. So I could do one like that if you want to see a stamped version or if you like the strip sentiments as well. I feel like this is going to help because you know I'm going to outline this in black. So I think I'm going to go with the strip sentiments just to accent the black a little bit. So let's get, oh my goodness, I have three sheets of black cardstock left. That's not good for me. I got to get some more. Okay, so I'm going to cut this down to match. So my initial cut was three and a quarter. So I need to go from the three and a quarter inch mark up one eighth of an inch to three and three eighths. <laughs> And then I'm at four and a half inches. I need to go up to four and five eighths. I'm going just a little over that just to be safe. And let's take a look at that. I think that looks pretty good. That gives me a nice border there. Okay. All right. Kathy Z says she likes the strip sentiments. If she likes the strip. Oh, Jennifer does too. All right. If Jennifer and Kathy say to use the strips sentiments, then I have to use the strip sentiments. Yeah, a strip sentiment is just a nice little touch, and it does look really nice with that black layer on there. Okay, got my little broken wing there. Okay, what did I do here? I think my paper cutter, I've had this paper cutter forever, and I think it has seen better days and it might be time. I clean my paper cutter a lot and um, it has a lot of goop on it because I cut a lot of sticky things. And I think I just need to cut that, clean that blade and I'll get a better, sharper edge. Okay, here we go. Let's put this together. Two for one cards. These are actually not two for one, but two different ways to make that metallic cardstock. So who's excited to try their own metallic cardstock? And who's gonna try foil and who's gonna try embossing powder? That's the question. I have to change my tape runner. I think I do this about every <clears throat> three or four lives. my refill. Pop her in and we're good to go. Okay. Going to try both. Okay. That's good. Oh, good. I'm glad to see a lot of you want to try this. I, I love these simple, these kind of clean and simple cards, especially if you're mass producing for a holiday like Thanksgiving or something, and you want to send a bunch of cards out to people. You don't have a ton of time. These kinds of layouts work really great. Now let me get my acrylic block here because I'm going to start with this one. I feel like this one's going to give me the most problems. So I'm going to start with this one and I'm going to use a little bit of Connect Glue. I'm expecting problems. <laughs> That's not good. That's not how you're supposed to think. You're not supposed to think about expecting problems. You're supposed to expect everything to go just fine. Yes, and for those of you who are joining us, by the way, um, if you just got here or you didn't hear the beginning, if you are anywhere near Hurricane Idalia, I just want you to know that Tom and I are praying for you and you are in our thoughts and prayers. We, we know that can be very nerve-wracking. Hopefully you're all prepared and you've got your snacks and you're just in a safe place by tomorrow night it'll all be gone hopefully i know it's going all the way it's going all the way through the carolinas okay so let's put this down here we're going to overlap a little bit <laughs> i love that and then get my tweezers because I think I'm going to do my best Mindy Egan impression here. 
I'm not very good at it, but I do find that these really work well for tiny little die cut pieces. Okay, get that right in that spot, and then let go. I did it. And then I'm gonna use my acrylic block. It's just a little weight on there. And now we're gonna do the same thing over here to this one. Now, if you just had used the toner paper, but you used the peel and stick toner paper, you could just peel the backing off of the peel and stick and stick it right down. But because I was using the regular toner paper, and I've always used the regular toner paper, I don't know why, I just have great results with it. I adhered it to a piece of white cardstock, and now I'm gonna have to um, use glue instead of peel and stick. I will not be able to peel and stick. But they do have the peel and stick. So it is nice if, you know, if you don't have a bunch of the regular laying around that you need to use up and you're in the market for it, check out the peel and stick. Alrighty, there we go. Got our glue on the back. We're gonna do that same layout over here. Get it into place and move it over just a little bit. This one's down a little lower, but I think I kind of like it. Get that down there. Now we've got to figure out cardstock colors. Now I was thinking about fresh asparagus for this one. It just feels very peaceful. What do you guys think? And I like the big wide border. Let me put this against white so you could see it a little better. It's kind of pretty, huh? I like it. I think I'm gonna do that on this one, but this one, I also had sweet mango cut. So tell me, maybe you like this better. Do you like that better? Or do you like the fresh asparagus? This almost seems too happy. <laughs> not that I'm not happy, but this just seems more peaceful or something. All right. Yep. Okay. People are liking the green. I'm going with you guys then on this. So we'll adhere this. One here. We're going to give these both away tonight. All right, so this one is that beautiful antique. It still has a lot of shine, right? But it's antique looking. This one, I think I think something like prickly pear might be really pretty for this one. I didn't really prepare for this, but what do you think of prickly pear with that and that real shiny gold? You guys like prickly pear? I kind of do. I don't have Plum. Plum was retired, but the good news is we are actually having it custom milled, which means we're going to have half a warehouse full of it. But so I'm really counting on you guys to buy it when it comes in. <laughs> but I don't have any more and we're out of it completely. We're having it milled and it shouldn't take too long. Okay, let's look at that. That's prickly pear. Um we could look at honey mustard. Honey mustard is warmer and that's in there. So let's look at a little honey mustard with that. I don't have the plum. I'm sorry. I agree with all of you. Plum would be would have been the perfect one. Okay, good. I'm glad you guys are going to order it. <laughs> brown. Hmm. Brown might be good. Craft might be good too. Okay, on. Okay, guys like the honey mustard the best, huh? Oh no, I'm seeing a blah. That's not good. Okay, the first one. All right, let's go with the prickly pear. And then by all means, you guys, if you make this card and you've got the plum, if any of you are lucky enough to still have some of that plum, make it with the plum because I want to see it. I desperately need to see that. I miss my plum punch. All right, let's see how this goes. We could do the green too. I mean, 
but then we have two of the same. Sometimes it's fun to have a variety. Now, if you make this card yourself at home, you could stop right here and not put a greeting on. And then if you needed a sympathy card, this would make a really nice sympathy card. Even though it's got a little bit of sparkle to it, it's still very peaceful and you could just pop on a sympathy greeting. If you, um, yeah, cranberry tart was great too, but cranberry tart wasn't a cardstock issue. That was a ink issue. They couldn't get a certain pigment. It The pigment that they were using to make cranberry became illegal here in the United States. Don't ask me. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how all that works, but I guess it couldn't be sold in California or something. It was exploding. <laughs> there were issues. I'm telling you. It's there it's, were there were ink compatibilities. Oh my goodness, Tom, before I go any further, let's do your word of the day. I forgot. You've been you've been spitting words of the day all day, they, but they may have they may have had enough. <laughs> Come on, get us in, get us on the screen. Okay, word of the day. <laughs> yes, we need a word of the day. We really do. <laughs> okay, the word of the day, today's word of the day is, let's see here, egg spendable. That's when you get a dozen, do a dozen donuts, not donuts, eggs. And one was cracked and you didn't know it. And so that one is egg spendable. Oh my gosh. You can't buy a dozen eggs and lose one. They're too egg expensive. Egg expensive. <laughs> egg expensive. Now we're getting a little existential. <laughs> so Well, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. All right, word of the day. <laughs> Back in the dead space. Okay. So I'm going to add <laughs> So very grateful onto this one. And I'm going to add hello, friend, onto this one. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I'm going to pop it up, too. Okay, we went a little crazy with that. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. I had to feel included. So I'm going to put these little quarter-inch foam squares just on half of this. And I think I'll tape the other half down. Oh my gosh, how many people just unsubscribed because of all that extra stuff we did there? <laughs> Don't leave. It gets better. <laughs> all right. So I'm not going to put this one on. I'm going to move this one down a little bit. Let's see if that fits in there better. There we go. It does. So I'm just taping it onto like three quarters of this because the rest of it is just going to rest on top of this die cut. So we'll put this right here like that. There we go. So very grateful. We could put some little embellishments on there too. By the way, our strip sentiments are foilable. So you can foil those if you want to. And then this, let me get it on the right side. But I do like that pop of black. I, I have to tell you, I love the little pop of black on there. You could put a little tape over here if you wanted and have it stick to the leaf, but I'm just going to stick it right on here. I'm going to bring it up a little higher. Eggs, by the way, are Gina's everyday breakfast. Yes, every day. Every day. So I don't have any little metallic ones left, but I think the gold metallic, there's one here. I think a couple little gold metallic pearls would be just delightful on here. But I don't have any left. We have them on the way. I heard that they shipped and we're going to get more of them. 
because I've used up all my tiny ones. On How this. many things do you have on the way? Are you responsible for all those ships backing up in the harbor? I am. I am. <laughs> I know that um, something did just let me know that it was in the harbor, which is very exciting. But, you know, it's hard to... I do like the bigger ones, though, too. I think that looks actually very pretty. So I think I'll do that. Let me see if I can find one more. Black would be nice, too. But I think I've used all my medium ones, too. Oh, here's one. I see some of them. Gina likes her eggs um, scrambled mercilessly. Yeah. And then fried into oblivion. I do. Burnt. I do. When I order breakfast, Tom and I were at a little breakfast restaurant the other day, and I said to the, the person, I would like my eggs pulverized into dust, and I would like turkey bacon, and I want it cooked so well done that if you drop it, it will shatter. <laughs> But isn't that a good way to order it? I mean, if you like your stuff well done, isn't that a good way to order it? If you drop it, it will shatter. And, I mean, it, and it comes out shattered. Yeah. Well, and th yeah, it's scary. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> That's funny. I found some little ones in the mix. And I think this card just needed the little gold babies in there. Oh, I love that. I love it. This one's getting gold too. Put that in the wrong spot. So that's going to be in a new spot now. There we go. It's all good. Wherever it ends up, it's all good. Okay. So there are my two finished cards. So once again, we have the antiqued look by using embossing powder to make our own gold cardstock. And then we have the foiled look, the more metallic look using foil. Gives you that more mirrored look. Wow. Ooh, I love these. And just in case you were wondering, I wouldn't have thought to do any of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're supposed to be in a live soon, Tom. <sighs> we got to do that. Everybody's waiting. Oh, and I did promise that I would show you the other leaves that I cut out with the foil. Look at how pretty these are. Aren't they beautiful? They I look so them. much more like sturdy than they are. Like they, they look metal. They do. They look like chrome. I mean, can you imagine doing this with the silver foil? Yes. And then also we have all those glitter foils. So... You could use radiant red or you can use dazzling orange and then mix that with some other beautiful colors underneath. So much fun. Okay. Do a spray, a spray of leaves. Yes. Fall yes. leaves. All okay. right. All right. So we're going to give them away. So why don't we start with the metallic one, which I very delicately did surgery on to get it back together. All right, we we got winners. We've got a winner. All right. Drum roll. All right, the winner of this card is April Lynn Barrett. April hey, Lynn April, Barrett. Hey, April, congratulations. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay. And then this one right here, the metallic one. Goes to Selena Wright. Selena Wright. Selena. Mm -hmm. Yay, Selena. All right, ladies, congratulations. All you have to do is send your name and address to info at ginakdesigns.com, and I will get these cards right out to you. Well, everybody, this was so much fun, and I hope you enjoyed these two fun ways to make your own metallic cardstock, and you'll give them a try. Uh, Tom and I will be back on Thursday with a fun crafter noon. I don't know what we're going to do yet, but I have a few ideas. Maybe I can even talk Tom into being on this side of the camera. We'll see. We'll see. Uh -oh. I'm not <laughs> I'm not making any promises yet. <laughs> I got to clear it with the boss over there. 
And then I'll be back over the weekend with another five minute card video. So I hope you'll stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And again, everybody in the path of the storms, stay safe, stay healthy, everybody. We love you all so very much. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.